Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be showing you how to take our audio spectrum templates and use them to create something amazing to showcase your audio. Just to clarify right off the bat, this is not a tutorial for how to create an audio spectrum effect from scratch. We actually already did a tutorial on that, showing you how to create this effect from the ground up. So the tutorial we're gonna be going through today with templates might be a more suitable quick solution for editors or musicians who feel intimidated by After Effects. In my opinion, the hardest part actually isn't creating the spectrum itself, it's creating the surrounding scene so that you can utilize it in a creative way. And the best part of these templates is that they do most of the heavy lifting for you and give you an amazing looking starting point so you can just dive right into editing and adding your own flair. But let's not waste any more time and let's just dive right into it. Once you've downloaded the template, you'll want to start by double clicking the After Effects template that's inside. And you'll open up a project that's ready for you to customize. The template here is actually a pack of 20 different styles of audio visualizers. So as you scrub through the main timeline here, take a look at what templates are available and find the one that best fits your needs. I personally really like this one here, number 18. So all we have to do is double click on it and now we're inside of the composition for that particular template. And right off the bat, you can see that it's pretty cool, but you're probably wondering how you actually change things. Well, let's start with the basics. How do we actually get the audio spectrum to start pulsating to the beat of our music? Well, thankfully, it's incredibly simple. Just look here on the left hand of our composition to see if there is any layers that are labeled for audio. And if so, just double click on it. You could also go up here to your project, edit comps, audio, and double click on the audio composition with the same name as your template version you're in, but I find it way easier just to go down here and click the one that's already in our composition. Once you double click on it, all you have to do is drag and drop in the music or audio file you want to use right inside of your audio composition. That's literally it. Now, when you go back out to the template composition, you can see that the audio spectrum is reading your audio file and generating a visual display of it. Awesome, right? Other elements are really easy to change as well. If you wanted to change the text, those layers will be labeled as such and clicking on it once will highlight which one you've actually selected if you're unsure or if there's multiple similar elements that could get confusing. Double click and dive in and change the elements like titles and subtitles and adding a logo or an artist picture is as simple as dropping it into the labeled composition. But what happens when we want to change things like the color of the background or the color of elements, etc.? Well, you can find the control layer here on the left hand side as well and either drop it down and reveal the effects or highlight it and go up to effect controls. Now coloring things like text or your audio spectrum or shapes here is as simple as clicking the swatch and selecting a new color. Really simple. But once you've gone through all of that, there's still some elements that I want to change, but I really can't find where to do that. For example, I want to change my audio spectrum itself so that it doesn't just start in the middle here, but takes up the entire bottom section of the screen. And I want to make its peaks higher and tweak it so that there's some more action going on. Well, with what we can see now, there's actually no way to make those changes. That is, unless you know about shy layers. Shy layers are a way for you to hide certain layers of your composition from view without deleting them. And if we look here, we can see that this little blue symbol for shy layers is on, indicating that there may be layers hidden from view. And when we click it, we can see that there's actually a lot more going on to drive this template than we originally thought. You have full ability to tweak and change elements here, but these layers were hidden from view to prevent beginners from being overwhelmed and to make everything look and feel a lot more clean and simple. These elements are also typically way more integral to the structure of the template, but are not typically things that you'll want to customize. So it's just easier to keep them hidden. But now here we can find a layer called Audio Spectrum, where we can make the changes that I was talking about. So let's go through them. I can go here to the Audio Spectrum, and I can take the starting point and drag the value here over until my spectrum is starting at the place where I want it to, so that now it's taking up the entire bottom of the screen. Great! This made our spectrum a little bit more spaced out though, so we can increase the number of frequency bands to account for that change or change up the number entirely for a different look, maybe to get a smooth solid or a spaced out minimal look. But I'm just gonna set my value here to 150. I also wanted to make my peaks larger, and I can actually do that really easily here by just increasing the maximum height value here. 
just make sure to play through your song a bit to see if there's any sections where the intensity is way more or way less than you were expecting. And lastly, to change the frequencies that actually impact the spectrum, just change up the start and end frequency values. I'll make my range start at 1 and end at 1000. Great! So now that I've edited the look and style to the point that I'm happy with, I can go ahead and click on the shy layers again here to make my composition a little bit more clean and easy to deal with. But guys, I wanted to take a moment and give you a bit more of an idea of the types of things you can do with these templates beyond just playing music. Because maybe you're not a musician wanting to promote a song, so you might be wondering how you can actually take advantage of this type of template. Well, one great example of non-music applications is as a visual element for a podcast. Maybe you have one, but you didn't film it. It's just audio, but you want to post it to YouTube, but there needs to be some visuals that go along with it. So what about doing something like this? Setting up one of these templates so that you have two spectrums for each person who's talking. If you recorded you and your interviewee separate, this is actually super easy. And all it requires is duplicating the audio spectrum elements. But after you duplicate the spectrum, just make sure to go back up to the actual audio spectrum effect and change the source that the audio is coming from for the newly copied spectrum. Otherwise, both spectrums will be playing the same audio source and look exactly the same. Changing it will make sure that you have two separate and distinct audio spectrum visuals. Also, make sure that all the way through your compositions, you have this audio checkbox turned on here so that it can actually be heard through your final composition. But even more simple than that, sometimes you just might wanna take a composition and then remove the background and add in a looping stock graphic that you've downloaded from Motion Array. There's no limit to the things that you can do with an audio visualizer template. If you wanted to check out more, we've listed some of our favorites for you to check out. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.